Hi everyone, this is Cat Coloring. Welcome back to my channel, or just welcome if you're new to my channel. I'm back here today with a new video, and this is the second part of the beginner tutorial Coral Reef from Hannah Carlson's Tales from Atlantis. Today I will be coloring uh, some other things from the Coral Reef. These one I think they're called Sea Anemones in English. Sue in Danish. I will be coloring some of the other corals, these with holes, the giant clams over here, and some of these other smaller corals. So I have researched a lot and I just wanted to show you uh, this picture. That was my inspiration for the red and uh, pink corals. It's this one on my phone. You can see clearly that we have these nice red and pink uh, corals. But I have also studied other pictures um, online, mostly from National Geographic and uh, from the Australian website about the Great Barrier Reef and also something called Ocean Outside. Um, you can see here there are so many, many options about how you can color these and lots of nice colors. This one is actually taken by a Danish uh, underwater photographer from Danish waters. I had absolutely no idea that we had such beautiful sea anemones in Danish waters. But um, And I have chosen this one. And the colors from this one to color the sea anemones here in this picture. Um, and that means that I am going to be using, going to find them here. Um, I'm going to be using the neon yellow. It's not very often that you use the neon colors in the Prismacolor set, but the neon yellow here is obvious uh, for these glowing parts of the plant or animal. It's actually an animal. It's a uh, PC 1035. I am also going to be using yellow chartreuse. Trus, trus, I think it's yellow chartreuse. PC 1004. Um, and I'm also going to be using the Chartreuse PC 889 and the Lime Peel PC 1005 and for the darkest color, the Marine Green PC 988. And you might ask yourself, how have you found these colors? Well, I studied the picture, the photo, of course, and then I used this one from Color with Claire. I'm really happy about this because this is not just a swatch chart. This is the color family chart, which means that when I have identified one color, that was the neon yellow down here, and I wanted the yellow chartreuse, I can see that in the same color family, we have the chartreuse, the apple green, but I don't think we need so much green for this animal and the lime peel and marine green and they are in the order of the family. So this makes it so much easier when you have chosen one color and then to see the family color chart here, you can identify the other colors that will match with this color. So you don't always have to use a color wheel. Sometimes this is enough. Um, so I will also be using for the bottom of this um, the Goldenrod PC 1034 and the Yellow Ochre PC 942. Whoops. And if we look at the picture once more, you can see here that at the bottom, hope you can see it, there are some yellow brownish colors, the Goldenrod and the Yellow Ochre. You can also see that then it starts to glow, the neon yellow, and then it turns more and more from yellow green, the sh yellow chartreuse and chartreuse, to a more darker green, hence the lime green and the marine green. So let us try to begin coloring this one. And I want to um, color this bottom of them just a little bit of the goldenrod. Um, because I think that these 
brownish yellow colors progress down here. So just a tiny bit of that. And then I will take my yellow ochre. And then add some more here. And just a little bit here. And then if you remember from the photo, it just begins to glow. So here I, whoops, they are very much alike, these one. I will use the neon yellow and they glow quite a bit. So I want the neon yellow to be a good stretch of these tentacles. I don't know what you call them. one there. It's not easy to keep a hold of all these tentacles. They almost look like snakes. And you have to be sure that you get as much of them that you get color in. And then some of them are a lot longer than the others. And then you just progress with the yellow chartreuse. Oh, I actually think that that was the ocean. I'll just have to correct that later. This one is actually one of these tentacles and was not the ocean. I think it's, I think that one goes down there. It's really difficult to see, I must say. Um, I think it's okay. And I can always correct what I miss here with them. Um, um, I am also going to be using a gel pen later. to um, outline these tentacles, for a lack of a better word. Uh, and it's one of these uh, jelly rolls. I have it here from uh, Sakura Jelly Roll Moonlight. And uh, it has this neon color, neon yellow. I've only used it once for coloring some, I think it were, was ghosts. Um, in another Hannah Carlson book, Tales from the Witch's Cottage. So, I will use it later to uh, color all of these uh, black lines so it will be completely glowing. Then, at the end here, I want to um, use the lime peel. have to be careful not to color the fish. So I think that, um, as you can see here, I haven't colored completely with the pastel. I think that I will actually, when I have uh, colored it all and added this gel pen, I think I want to use the neon yellow to add a bit of a glow around this animal. Oops, I've completely forgotten this one.
So when you have added these colors, I have to layer them a couple of times. I'll just show you here that I will add the marine green here at the top. Oh, there are so many tentacles here. And I keep looking and thinking, thinking that I'm for, yes, I forgot one there. And over here also. Wow. There are so many tentacles here. So this was a top. I haven't completely colored it yet, but um, I think that this video will be extremely long if you have to look at I'm coloring everything. So I will just give you an idea of how I want to do this. I'm using the golden rod again for this little bottom. And we have to be careful here with these very small corals. As I said, perhaps darker in this on this side than this side of it because the light comes from here. And as I said in the last video, we imagine that this isn't very deep in the ocean. Perhaps I would add another a bit darker color here. I might use this. Uh, this is a sepia. Perhaps just a tiny bit over here to create some more shadow. And then I will use the yellow ochre on this side. To mix and blend the colors and I will just use the yellow ochre for this one. So this is not done. It has to be layered, but this will give you an idea of how you can color these uh, and these very small. I just, ha just have to sharpen my lime green because these corals are very small, so you have to have a sharpened pencil. And I want to color these in sort of the same color palette. I want to color them the lime peel here at the bottom. Just a little bit of lime peel.
So this is not quite finished yet. I have to wait until it dries and you have to uh, add several layers if you uh, choose to use the Sakura Jelly Pen Moonlight Neon Yellow here to enhance the neon yellow of uh, this sea anemone. So this is not quite finished, but the rest of it is finished. So I will move on and I will be concentrating on this these big corals and um, I have been inspired by this picture you can see here so I will be using these colors to uh, color these corals so the holes in these will be colored with the sepia PC948 and the rest of the coral will be colored with ginger root PC 1084. God, it's hard to see here, but PC 1084. And I've never used this one either, so um, interesting. And also the seashell pink PC 1093, also a color that I rarely, if ever, use. So this coral reef drawing really gives one an opportunity to use some of those colors that you never use from the Prismacolor set. The Prismacolor set. So the holes are dark, but they are not black. So I will just immediately color them with the sepia. And all of these holes uh, are deep and go inside of the shell. I think that this is a um, some sort of a small little stone from the bottom. So I will not color this one. But this one next to I will also color the holes with this sepia. I also think that this one is a stone and doesn't belong to this coral. So the holes are dark. And then I will use the ginger root, which is a lighter color, to color the top of these corals. So the ginger root on top And then I will swift. I will take the seashell pink. Switch to the seashell pink. So some of these corals are very light in color, so it's difficult to be using a third color, a darker color, to color it. Color it. Um, so I will have to use just a color to add a bit of shade here when I'm done. So also seashell pink here, and then the um, ginger root to take the top here and then it's just a matter of uh, layering and finish this and add a bit of a shade I think that 
The sepia might be good to uh, if you want a darker form of shade. If you want a lighter, I think that perhaps the bronze could do. Yeah. So I think that's what I will do. So as you can see, I have colored some more of these uh, corals with these holes and I switched the colors. So I use seashell pink on top and the ginger root at the bottom. So this way you can color the corals differently, but still use the same colors you have chosen for them. So now it's time for another type of coral and it's these corals with a uh, some sort of an oval co coral with the, this tip at the top and I have chosen to use some purple colors to color this one and um, I have chosen the lilac PC956 and the lavender PC934 and the lavender because it has uh, another shine to it uh, it's a bit more bright than the lilac and I have also chosen the palmer violet as a darker sort of violet here PC1008 and as my darkest color here especially to add some more shadow I have chosen the black grape PC996 so we have a lot of these sort of oval corals here and um, you can see here that some of them are partly covered by these clams i think they're supposed to be giant clams here so i want to uh, here where they are in some part of a shadow to use the black grape and also here at the bottom. And as you can see, some of these corals will be darker than some of the others and we keep remembering that we have light here and more shadow here so these here will also have to be a bit darker than the rest of them So let's just take this one and then it's the last one here. So when you have added this dark color, the black grape, then you take the palmer violet as some sort of a, um, can you say a middle color? and color at the same pace, uh, places and then just a little bit more so you can see here we build the dark and the middle layers first but we leave room for a lighter color And then here we switch, so we color mostly from the bottom and up because more light is coming through the ocean here. And we still remember that some of these are in more of a shade than others. Yeah, and I have two light colors. I have the lilac and the lavender. 
and I turn yet again to this color family chart by Color with Claire. And you can see that the black grape, uh, palmer violet, and lilac are all in the same color family. So they are the colors most alike. So I will use the lilac to add the light color here, and then I will use the lavender to make the top of these corals pop with some extra brightness. So I add the lilac here. And then I take the lavender and color the top of them. And you can see it gives just a little extra pop of color here on these corals. And it also adds, I think, a bit more brightness of color to this coral reef. I mean, these are sort of more muted colors here in these corals. Uh, we also have the sand here, which I'm not going to color today, but this will also have to be a more muted color, a more beige-like color. So we have to have um, pops of color from these corals. So it's not, it won't be just muted colors. We have to uh, make the page pop. So I will just finish layering these and then I will show you the result. So as you can see here, I have colored the purple or violet um, corals. I've also just sneaked this uh, little one of the clams in. But I want to show you how to color with this one. It's larger. I have been inspired by this picture, um, this one, you can see it. So giant clams, they sit on a coral reef and where they attach themselves, they stay there for the rest of their lives. And um, this picture is from the Australian Geographic. And um, you can see here that the clam itself on the edges is covered with all of these uh, algae and sort of little microorganisms that live in the ocean. So it's not um, a bright color here at the sides of uh, these clams. You can see here in the drawing, we can't see them from the top, but from the side. But you can see here on this picture that um, if you look at the opening, there's a clear green line and then there we have some uh, aquamarine-like colors, turquoise, turquoise, you could also say. And then we have some, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but they are dark blue spots. And um, these colors have inspired me to, uh, as to how I'm going to color this one. So I will color the edge, this green, uh, the apple green, PC912. I will color the outer bits of the shell here, uh, Aquamarine PC905. And the inner form of these um, clams, I will color Light Aqua PC992. And the blue spots will be colored with the Indigo Blue PC901. C901. So, I will begin with the light aquamarine and I will color this from the bottom up. And yes, this is a bit unusual. I use the lightest color here at the bottom. But I think it gives a nice uh, touch to this clam that it's not just 
dark color at the bottom and light color at the top. So I will just layer here the aquamarine here. Also, I think that uh, the indigo blue matches the aquamarine better than the light aquamarine. We just have to color around these little dots. You can already see here how this is going to be mixed. I think it looks quite nice already. And the edge. with this very clear and bright apple green. And the spots, indigo blue. So you can already see what it's going to, to look like. We also have some uh, smaller uh, clamshells here. And I think that I will use the same colors, um, perhaps not all of them, to color these. So I will just finish coloring it and then I will show you or else this video will be far too long if I had to um, record everything I do. As you can see here, I have finished coloring the clam and also the little clam on top of it. And uh, I used just uh, indigo blue and the aquamarine for this one. So I think it turned out quite nice, perhaps just a little bit more green here. And then I thought that I would just add a little pop. So I have this uh, Jelly Roll uh, Stardust from Sakura. And I the dark blue. And I just wanted to color these small dots with this one. So we added just a little bit of uh, glitter. It's a little glitter gel pen here. to the clam and of course dark blue because the indigo is also a very dark blue and since I have already colored this one I will just add a little bit of glitter here so these were the things that I wanted to color today, I haven't finished the other page, so I'm going to and I will show you the result. And then the next time I will have to uh, look at uh, what I miss, what I haven't colored yet, and what colors we um, sort of perhaps lack in this uh, drawing. But let me first color the rest of the sea anemones, the giant clams, and these different corals. And then I will show you, and then we will take a look at it. So, as you can see now, I have finished coloring the rest of the uh, pages with these new corals, sea anemones. And I have just, I don't know if you can see it if I do this. If you can see that here, I just added a little bit of glitter at the edge of the clams, the smaller clams. So you can also see that this has divided the page into even smaller areas. So we have the bottom left, a little crab, some Jewelry, a necklace, diamond, uh, a coin, I think, some uh, vases, two big ones, two smaller ones, and we have, of course, all the fish um, and the bubbles. So we will color them in the third part of this tutorial. So thank you for watching this. If you think that this is just the video you need to get to coloring. Please like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so that you will get notified when I upload my tutorials. 
I also have a series called How to Color, where I just color smaller bits, like how to color snow or how to color uh, a bouquet background or whatever. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the third and last video of this beginner tutorial called Reef. Have a nice day. Happy coloring. Bye.